long time ago, before your mother and grandfather and grandparents were even born, I began my life. I started out as a young seedling in the forest in northern Vancouver Island. I grew up among other trees who were taller and sheltered me from the cold winter winds and rain and from the hot summer sun. As the summers and winters came and went, I grew taller and stronger. I sheltered the birds from the storms in my branches. Insects sheltered there too, and animals rested in my shade. As I grew older, some of the very same older cedar trees who had protected me and nurtured me while I grew up were now becoming very old, and when the strong winter winds blew hard, they fell to the earth. There they still provided shelter to the little creatures, and slowly became part of the earth once again. However, this was not to be my future. One day, after I had lived in the forest for 260 summers and winters, my sojourn in the forest came to a sudden end. I was cut down. A truck carried me to a place that provides cedar to carvers and other people. In the late summer, I came to the University of Victoria by truck, and I met the professors and artists and carvers who were going to help me go into the next stage of my life cycle. There was a spiritual ceremony before it all began. The people began to call me the old man. I might have been a little taken aback or frightened by all this change and so many people, but all the people gently introduced themselves to me. They took care to only work with me when they were not feeling any negative feelings such as anger. They carved legs, an abdomen, and a head of a thunderbird on me. As they worked, their plans changed as the ideas of what to do emerged from the artist's mind and from his dreams and from myself. One day, the people moved me into a building at the university where it was warm and dry. They continued to work to change my shape, carving more detail. Two wolves were carved on my chest. When the people's work was almost finished, the people gathered with friends and elders and drummers and singers, and they celebrated my transformation. The sound of the drumming and songs of celebration and joy shook the walls and almost raised the roof off of the building. Soon I will stand and I will be able to welcome all the incoming students who arrive here from my own land and many other lands. With the help of artists, carvers, students, and professors, I will have entered the next stage of my life. I wonder what I will see in the years to come. 